Right, I'm with uh, Alan Collins again for our top-up interview. It's August the 12th, I think, Indeed. Today. In Jersey, what's happening in Jersey as far as you're concerned that you can tell us about? Well, the Committee of Inquiry is still sitting. Um, it's been particularly interesting of late. It will be um, packing up, so to speak, for a little while very soon, um, and then um, restarting after the, the holidays. So I think we're in for um, more interesting evidence. So I will be um, following, like everybody else, I guess, with, with great interest, see what emerges. There have been quite prominent ex-employees of the system saying some quite strong things. Does that surprise you? Well, I think it's good that they have given evidence to the inquiry because it helps provide an insight into how things work and how systems function. Uh, it enables, I would have thought, the inquiry to see the strengths and the weaknesses and to work out how things might have happened that shouldn't have happened and so on. It helps to provide a context in which to make judgments. So, yeah, I think it was um, good that these people did, did give evidence. I remember one of the very first persons who was a witness was a UK sort of expert who'd been in this sort of line of business all his life, virtually all his working life, doing reports on things. And he was explaining how there had been incidents, say, during the Second World War where children had been mistreated and those reports came out, recommenda recommendations came out. But always Jersey never seemed to fully grasp the implications of it. They never implemented. And that was even this week there was talk about Jersey should have a children's minister. And that's been talked about for 10, 15 years. These things don't happen. Why is it? Well, good question. And hopefully the inquiry will, when it gives its report, um, will throw some light on all of that and make recommendations as well as um, making findings. It's interesting because the issues of child welfare go back to the 19th century. If you think about the legislation that was brought in back in the UK in the 19th century to stop you know, children being sent down the mines and regulating children working in factories. So the issues of welfare have been at the forefront getting on for, near, for, for, well, for 150 odd years. And the abuse of children um, was certainly recognised by the UK government a hundred years ago. Winston Churchill, when he was um, Home Secretary, was quite enlightened when it came to um, prisons and punishments and so on. And there was a real concern about um, young lads being in adult prisons who being subject to abuse. And um, legislation um, was brought in to. to stop youngsters being sent into adult prisons and so on. And then after the First World War in the 1920s there was a, a, a Royal Commission I believe that looked into child welfare and that brought about the Children and Young Persons Act 1933 which was a major piece of legislation and then that was replicated here in Jersey a couple of years later. So but these are, issues... Why aren't these effective? Why aren't they effective? They don't seem to get to where it's needed, do they? My own personal view, and others may well disagree or agree or disagree fundamentally, is that you can have legislation and you can have regulations and you can have laws and you can have systems, but they're not worth the paper that they're written on unless they are implemented correctly. Because the ultimate irony to me is that the worst cases that come down are people who've been, children mostly, who've been put into institutions where they should be protected. And that's where they get the least protection. I understand where you're coming from. And the, the point that I'm going to make is you can have laws and regulations and children's homes and whatever to protect children, but they're only as good as the people who run, run them and run the systems. And so I think, for me, it comes about comes down to management, training, checks and balances. You've got to have the right people, the right training, the right supervision to make sure that these systems and 
regulations are applied and uh, work properly. I mean, Jersey doesn't seem to be any worse or any better than many places in the UK. Ironically, I haven't heard much coming out of Guernsey. I don't know if they did anything right or it just has yet to be, uh, to be revealed. I don't know. So, so, <laughs> so, you know, I'm dealing with what I do, um, do know. And it can be towns, cities, little islands, yeah. anywhere. Yeah. All you know, the same. These are big, troubling issues. And yeah, you know, and back in the UK, there's been countless inquiries. And I think people are right to ask, well, aren't lessons ever being learned? And we have to hope that lessons are being learned. Um, I've had yeah. I've had buzzing around in my head the three P's: prostitution, pornography, and paedophilia. Right now, obviously there are connections; they're all concerned with sexual activity. But in practice, they I mean, to listen or to read the Daily Mail, all these things are on the increase in in a bad sense. I mean, prostitution it sounds like a, a bigger phenomenon than it ever was. Paedophilia because of internet and. The word spreading, pornography again, the internet, word spreading, there seems to be links of people, there seems to be links of people for prostitution, importing people, trading in people, all linked together. Is it a link or am I just imagining things? Well, I certainly would agree that it's complex and it's becoming increasingly complex because of the use of the internet and, and so on. And I think that's the, the major challenge for police forces and enforcement agencies. Um, throughout um, the world, it's it coming to how you're going to be able to cope with how this offending is evolving with the use of technology. Um, the South Wales Police a couple of years ago identified very, um, very effectively how the internet was being used in exploitation of um, children um, in the Far East by um, 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 Australians and similar problems were also identified around the same time in, in, in Britain. Um, and my dealings with uh, the police um, are such that I recognise that they recognise that's a problem and how they're addressing it, for example, by seconding um, police officers to um, countries in Southeast I Asia. One final word the UK mammoth inquiry, which hasn't actually started yet. Will it ever start? Will it? Well, let's see what evolves over the coming weeks and months. You know, it's you know, it's been fanfared as it were. It's going to happen, so they say. So let's let's see what it's all about. Okay. Next up, no okay. doubt. Speak to you again. Thank you very much. <laughs>